Hi folks and welcome back to my YouTube channel and in this video we're going to replace the distributor of an MGB GT V8. The distributor in the vehicle was actually uh, no good. It wobbled and it has problems with the rotor and so on. So I ordered a new one. So a few things about this distributor. Uh, you can buy them in two types. You can buy them for carburetors and you can buy them for um, injection based engines and I think the only difference is the advanced curve uh, regulated by the bob weights inside the distributor because that's based on centrifugal forces in combination with a vacuum system which is attached to your intake manifold. What else do we have on this one? Well on this side you have what we call the uh, amplifier because this uh, distributor is already working with an electronic pickup inside. And at the bottom here, that's where the distributor will grip into the uh, engine and it's how it's been driven. And all the way on the bottom here, and I don't know if you can see it guys, that's the part that's going to drive your oil pump. So you got to make sure when you put this distributor in that the little opening here uh, fits to the notch of your oil pump. Otherwise it isn't going to work too well. And for the rest, there is not much to be said about this distributor except the fact that I already have numbered uh, the positions of the cables. So this is, I don't know if you can see it, cylinder number one, two, seven, five, six, uh, three, four, eight, and back to one. And these are actually the cylinders or the matching cylinders um, on this cap. Now, you don't have to follow that sequence. In essence, you could really start with any kind of these points. It all depends better on how you're gonna rotate uh, the distributor inside the engine block, but I do recommend to follow this one because this is the standard uh, sequence and it makes it easier for your cable runs or your spark plug cable runs uh, to have them in the right order. So uh, let's talk a bit now about what we're going to do uh, first and then we'll start really the work. Okay, a little bit about what we're going to do because it's a little bit of work. First of all, we're going to remove all the spark plugs so we can rotate the engine freely without having to put too much torque and force onto it. Second thing we're going to do is to align the first cylinder to its proper top dot center. And we all know that this is a four-stroke engine. So it means the crankshaft is doing two full rotations to complete the four strokes. The first stroke being, of course, the intake when the piston is going down and sucking in mixture. Then the piston comes back up, it now has compression, ignition takes place, now we have the labor stroke, piston is going back down, and then finally the piston comes back out to evacuate the burned gases. So these are the four movements of the piston, and we have to make sure that the ignition and the adjustment when we install the distributor happens at the proper time. That is the time when ignition takes place, that's the time when the piston is at its top dead center after the compression stroke. Remember, there's two times the top that center, so you've got to make sure you got the right one. And I'll show you how you can identify that. We'll also mark the uh, marking points on the pointer and on the crankshaft pulley, so it's easier to see where the marks are for the static adjustment. The static adjustment for the ignition is about three degrees uh, before top that center of piston number one. Uh, and once we've done all that, we'll then remove the actual old distributor and then we'll uh, make sure that the oil pump notch is aligned about, I think it's 10 to 4, but you'll see that in a few minutes. And then we'll position the old, uh, then, and then we'll position the rotor on the new distributor to the cylinder number one position and turn it back about uh, counterclockwise about 30 degrees. And that way, uh, when we insert the new distributor with these little two, with that little tooth wheel, it will move around a bit, but it will fit properly into the uh, holding place. And making sure that the notch of the oil pump fits into the opening of the actual uh, distributor all the way at the bottom, because it is your distributor which is driving your oil pump. Once we've done all this, then we'll move on and we'll actually start doing the actual alignment of, of the actually firing uh, or the timing as they call it. And for that one, we'll use a static method and we will use then a stroboscope light to do it uh, in more detail. So this is about the work we're going to do, guys. Uh, not very complicated. All right. So the very first thing we're going to do is to identify cylinder number one. And that's a cylinder which is closest to the radiator on the right hand side of the engine. If you stand in front of the engine, if you stand in the back, it's on the left. And just follow that spark plug lead all the way up to the distributor. 
and then put a marker up the distributor. This is it. This is the spot where you want to have the rotor pointing at when you put the new one in. The next step to do is now to remove all the spark plugs. Now we're going to replace those anyway, so um, that's number one. So we removed all the spark plugs, so now it's time to remove all the spark plug leads. There we go. You know, if you're changing the uh, distributor out, you might as well um, change all the leads. And you remember that we marked the cap before and we have an alignment on this side as well. I have two marks on them, so that's where the position of the first cylinder is. So now I'm going to watch at the rotor and I'm going to rotate around the engine and check the top that center until the rotor points exactly into this position. So that's one way of doing it if you still have a rotor in place. If you don't have a rotor in place, you have to do it in a different way and I'll explain that in a few minutes. But now let's first look at the uh, marking points on the crankshaft pulley. All right, so that marker, guys, is right there, and I'm just going to mark it with a bit of white paint. That's your marker or your pointer, which is sitting on the engine block itself and your reference. So now we need to rotate the crankshaft so that the marks on the actual pulley line up. So rotating the engine can be a bit of a, an issue. Uh, because you don't have easy access to any of it. The radiator isn't the way to put a socket on. So I'm using an oil filter removing, removal chain, which I wrapped around the pulley, and now I can actually push it. See? And that makes it very easy. So I'm gonna keep rotating the engine until I have the actual rotor pointing to the right position. So these are the markers on the actual uh, pulley, and I'm just gonna clean it up a bit so we can actually see what we're saying, right? So now with the markers a bit cleaned up, uh, we're gonna identify the top, that center, and that is right here. This is top, that center. On this side, this is after timing, and on the other side of that marker, it is the uh, advance. So I'm gonna be looking at a setting of about three degrees, and I'm gonna mark that as well, because that's where uh, it's supposed to be and it's going to be the first marker before the big one so let me just do that that is three degrees advance right here so now I'm going to keep rotating the engine in the proper direction until the rotor here is hitting position number one and I see the mark top that center So I'm getting closer and now I should be almost at cylinder number one and I should have the marks coming up and I actually I do see the marks coming you see them over there and as you can see I'm now having the pulley aligned with the pointer and it's at three degrees before top that center and I'm also having the rotor pointing to the mark on the body of the old distributor pointing to cylinder number one. This is the method to use if the distributor is still in place and you have identified cylinder number one on it and you make sure the rotor is pointing to that one and that you have the marking on top that center. That is one way of doing it. So guys, this is one method if you have a distributor in place that was working before or partially working. If you don't have a distributor in place anymore, then the trick is a bit different. The way to identify the proper top that center for cylinder number one is to remove the valve cover and look at the two valves, the inlet valve and the outlet valve, and make sure that both are fully closed. So you keep rotating the crankshaft until you see the intake valve opening up. Once that opens up, keep turning, keep turning until it closes again. And then while you keep on turning, watch for the next or the first top dot center marking that comes up. That is gonna be your top dot center on your compression stroke. That's easy. So now let's get on to the next phase, which is actually the removal of the old um, distributor. 
So let's undo the clamp. See, it's not even tight on this one. And then we should be good. And there we go. And now we should be able to wiggle it and actually pull it out. There we go. <clears throat> so here we have the old one. This is the new one. And as you can tell, they look pretty much the same. It's always good to double check before you fit things. And that looks all right. Um, I will, however, though, spray the new one or oil the seal here and a bit the pinching and the connections before I'm going to fit it. There we go. The important element right now is this, uh, this element here. This is the coupling piece which is connecting the oil pump to the distributor and the distributor is driven by this tooth wheel and it also drives the oil pump and I think I said that before. So it is important uh, that we now position the oil pump notch that goes in here in the correct position and that is 10 to 4. Let me show you that on the car before we start fitting the new distributor. This is the place where the distributor was fitted and inside, and I don't know if you can see it, you see that notch? That's the notch of the oil pump that has to fit into the bottom side of the distributor. Let me give you a little bit of a close-up. Inside you will find the notch of the oil pump that needs to be set to 10 to 4, looking at from the side. Now look on the video on the picture that I'm showing, uh, or the drawing, and then you can see exactly what I mean. Because it might not be all that clear uh, with the flashlight. So guys, a little recap. First we removed the spark plugs, then we positioned the crankshaft in the proper position so that it points the top dead center for the first cylinder. We had two methods to do that. If you still have the old uh, distributor in place, remove the cap and look at the point where the rotor is pointing to cylinder number one and then check the top dead center mark on the pulley. That should line up. That would mean that it's the proper top dead center. If you don't have the rotor or the distributor in place anymore, then just remove the valve cover and look at the valves and rotate again the crankshaft in the proper way until you see both valves, inlet and outlet valve, being fully closed. Uh, and the marker on the pulley is at top that center. We then removed the old distributor and we verified it with the new one. We oiled the new one and then finally we looked at the notch of the oil pump that is set to a position 10 to 4 and now basically we are ready to fit the new distributor. Fitting the new distributor is not very difficult. I will remove the cap first of all. That's a bit tough. There we go. Before fitting the new distributor I removed the cap and I placed the rotor in the position of uh, cylinder number one. Uh, remember that we marked that before and we know exactly where that is. Um, the next thing we're going to do is to make sure that the actual opening, the slot here on the bottom, is going to be aligned with the notch of the fuel pump. That's important. And then we'll rotate uh, the rotor on the top about 30 degrees counterclockwise to fit it in. And that's because of this uh, gear system here. So, we also greased it all up, so now we can actually go and try to fit it. That looks about right, so I need to turn it about 30 degrees back. That should be about it. So let's move it in and see if it does align or not. And it does. Now I can rotate it the way I need to rotate it. So that looks quite good to me. So that went in very smoothly. And now I can rotate this the way I need to rotate. So you gotta make sure it fits in all the way, right? And feel that the rotator is blocked. So let's do a little double check and see if cylinder one, remember that we marked all this before. And let's see, so here it is. And this is actually cylinder number one, right? There we go. So this fits properly and look at that. Cylinder number one pointing at cylinder number one. Good. 
So I'm going to put the clamp back for now. I'm going to attach the power lead. I'm going to lock up the cap. All right, that's good. And I'm going to connect the coil. There we go. And then finally, I'm going to connect one lead for spark plug number one. And this is position number one. So I'm just going to slide that in there for now. It's the old lead, by the way, guys. And I'm going to put a spark plug on it. There we go. And I'm going to hold it against the chassis. So now I'm going to turn on the ignition and I'm going to rotate the uh, distributor with the marking on my pulley still to three degrees before that top center and see at the moment when I get the spark. So turn on the ignition, but don't start the engine, okay? Just turn on the ignition and with the mark on the uh, crankshaft pulley still aligned to three degrees before top that center, you know, rotate the distributor and you should see the spark on the spark plug. I don't know if you can see it, but I, I will give you a little bit of a close-up. Now that we have the distributor in place and we have it more or less in the correct place, but not 100%, it is time to fit the spark plugs. And I'm going to fit new spark plugs and we will do the gap adjustment on those spark plugs. Nothing really special, guys. Uh, the gap is 0.7 on these spark plugs. It all depends on the type of spark plugs you have. But for this vehicle right here and this type of spark plugs, it's a 0.7 mil. So I will adjust all those and then we'll fit them into the vehicle. And at the end, we'll fit brand new spark plug leads and then we'll crank up the engine and we'll use a timing scope to verify that the timing is actually correct and fine tuned. I have installed the new spark plugs. I also installed all the leads. And if you need to know where what lead goes, then have a look on the picture that I'm providing in this video and then you'll see it on how it's all been distributed on the distributor. And then uh, if you want to know where the cylinders are, this is very simple on this engine. This is cylinder number one, which is the one nearest to the radiator on your left hand side if you standing behind the engine. Cylinder number two is on that side, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's how simple that is. So now it's time to crank up the engine for the first time and see if it's gonna run. I don't know, uh, we'll see. It's probably not going to run very smoothly because we still have to adjust the timing. We have done a static adjustment more or less uh, by looking at the spark plug, but that's not the most accurate way of doing it, but it's a starting point. I have still disconnected the vacuum hose because that's what you need to do when you go in to adjust uh, the engine running at idle speed. So let me see if I can get it cranked up. Make sure you removed all the tools and let's see. Well, that sounds pretty good to me already, but it's not perfect. And now it's time to further adjust it. So guys, the next thing to do is now to hook up the strobe light. And this is the strobe light. You're going to need this for final adjustment. Uh, it's already hooked up to the 12 volts and I already have clipped on the pickup point. This is the pickup point and you hook that up to the first lead of your first cylinder. And then you're kind of ready to start checking out the markings on your uh, crankshaft pulley that we marked before. Remember we had it at set at 3 degrees. Now that's static, not running. If the engine is going to start running, you should adjust the distributor by rotating it until the mark that you see with the uh, strobe light is at around five degrees plus or minus one. And that's because of the bob weights inside the uh, distributor that are going open and they cause a bit more um, advance. Don't forget to disconnect your vacuum uh, pipe because you don't want to have that vacuum advance yet. That's something for later. You can check it later on with the vacuum hose on and then you give some throttle up to 2000 RPMs and then you can see how much advance you're getting. You should see more advance happening uh, with the strobe light. So let me try to crank the engine up and then uh, have a look on where we are actually with the current setup. I can now check with the strobe light where the marks are 
But what I do see on the engine right now, it's running really low. It's only running about 300 RPM. So the first thing to do is to adjust the engine to about 800 RPM. About, more or less. That's it. So now I can check with the strobe light how accurate the timing is. And I think right now I'm at exactly five degrees. See the white marker there in the lines? So let's see if we can get this car cranked up again. There we go. That sounds pretty good. I have already hooked up the uh, vacuum hose. So now uh, I'm gonna check if the advance is working. And I do that again with the strobe light. I'm looking on the marks on the pulley and then I'm gonna give some throttle and as you see more advance. And it does. So that's quite good. So folks, this is the end of this video and I hope you enjoyed it a bit. Uh, if you have seen, it's not very hard. Within about an hour, you can get this all sorted out, but make sure that you have your timing marks right. If you have the old distributor on it, uh, do the method with the rotor pointing to cylinder number one. That's a very easy method. If you don't have the uh, distributor on the car anymore, then you have to take the valve cover off and look at the valves and then put the top that center correct for the first cylinder. And you can't go wrong with that one. This is a very easy and simple method. Fine-tuning takes, of course, a bit more work afterwards with the strobe light, but even that is easy to do if you have a strobe light. And, of course, I still have to adjust the carburetors, but that will be in another video. So if you have any comments or recommendations or you think, Steve, you're full of it, you know, let me know because I'm always willing to learn from you guys. Thank you so much and have a great day. Bye.